Hey everybody, welcome back to our Soundface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here to watch something mysterious. We're on hiatus from Zom 100 because they're on hiatus from Zom 100. Episodes will be returning in another week, apparently. That right? Uh, yeah, well, we're going to, um, we record these things on a normal date, right? And uh -huh. the hiatus date puts it later on in the week. So instead of just recording it on that day, we're just going to let the time pass by so that the next, that episode that fell on uh, earlier in the week will just go towards our next date. And that way, maybe if they do another slightly slower delay, we'll have that like little backlog so we don't have to keep doing this. Hopefully everything gets sorted out there, but in the meanwhile, Theta, you have picked out something special for us to watch in the meanwhile, and it is going to be a surprise to me and to everyone else. So the question is, Theta, what are we watching today? Well, last time we watched that thing from the uh, the biography thing from the mm -hmm. Full Metal Alchemist creator, which was kind of your pick there. Yeah, and so, I think we had a lot of fun with that. So what's your pick this time? Yeah, so this time I just kind of thought, like, what is the best one episode thing? And I thought, okay... First thing I wanted to do was not watch something that has like 12 episodes or something because I don't want to just like uh -huh. blue ball us on something we're not going to watch <laughs> or give uh, the audience a thought that we might start watching it. So, okay, it has to be one episode. Okay, next thing has to be at least uh, 24 minutes or under. We're not going to uh -huh. watch a 90 minute thing. <laughs> In the place oh, yeah, of the Hell's Moving Castle today. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sad. Well, I bring that up only because one of the things I looked at was a 90 minute thing, and it's like, no, I can't do that. That's a movie. Um, so uh, we had previously talked. I don't know if it was on screen or off screen about Hitalia. Decided against that one thing. It's a long series, and I don't think we want to do a intro to that. Uh, then I started looking at other uh, creators and writers of stuff that I had liked in the past. Uh -huh. One such thing that I brought up to you and Shy previously was A Time of Eve. I did think to myself, ooh, I'd really like to watch A Time of Eve, but that is a six-episode OVA itself. Can't do that. Falls out outside the thing. Uh, I should also mention this is uh, Yashiro... Yoshura. I never said their name out loud before, so that was my first time butchering that. I can tell I'm boring Griff to death already. Ah, uh, it's, just, it's just me being tired as usual. Don't mind me. So I looked into their work. One of them, as I previously mentioned, was a 90-minute OVA. Couldn't do that. But I found something else of theirs that I had not seen before. So this is going to be new to me, and it's going to be new to you. And Ooh, before exciting. I tell you what the name is, in case somehow you may have seen it before, which I highly doubt, I'm going to read for you the, uh, the description. Okay. Envision a realm where the conventional timeline of history has been shattered, leaving behind boundless mammoth relics. The oceans and continents which formerly characterized the globe now solely subsist in the archives retrieved from these ruins. Ura works for the Archive Excavation Department, where his duty is to retrieve and decode these uh, data remnants. One day, though, he stumbles upon a troubling visual record. So we're going to be watching a future boy watching historical documentaries. It's hard to tell, because it says the timeline of history has been shattered. So I don't even know what that means. Does that mean that we're like um, Doctor Strange walking through broken glass panes of time? <laughs> like, what if a what if a time we're gonna have bomb? a Doctor Who reference in the middle of this? Yeah, uh, I can say by like just the sound of it, I don't think I've watched anything like it before. Give me that title reveal. What are we watching? What we're watching today is Pale Cocoon. Yeah, literally never heard of that before, but this. This sounds like an exciting premise. I, I'm kind of interested in what the hell's going to happen here. Because there's a lot of cool things that could happen, I think. Just on the idea of it. As I said, I've liked the uh, the writer before from A Time of Eve. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I was thinking about, the description I really liked. But again, too long for the time scale that we're working with here. 
Mm. So I think in that case, we we know where we're starting. We got a vague idea of what we're watching. Let's just go ahead and see how it goes then. Uh, but before we get started, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some really access stuff, you can check us out over on the Patreon. Just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all sports to you, just a little bit extra. Click that link down below. Drop in the Discord. Let us know any other one-episode suggestions we might use in the future for a uh, potential filler. I know them, low. they did the time of Eve. <laughs> like they were going straight for like the low echoey space tones. Like this is literally just the theme everyone uses for space. They really could have built an elevator here, huh? Reminds me of the Library of Babel. Oh, exactly. I'm getting that same vibe here. Maybe with a hint of 12 monkeys. Yes. Gotta post this on Instagram. Uh oh. My favorite book. <laughs><笑><笑> To be accurate. He just loves his job. Keep that one for later. <laughs> Population explosion in 2209 AD. He kept two pictures of the same RAM. Oh. Was that L? I think it was literally an image of himself. Like L hunched up in his chair. Infinite office cubicles. Literal time clock. Not the worst place to vibe ever. Oh, 
So weird. Music tone to go with a scene. I, I guess they're trying to go with a everything is normal and calm kind of vibe. Which makes sense. There's no danger here, right? Yeah, we don't know what happened to the rest of the world other than population explosion. And apparently they're closing off layers closest to the top. Oh, they got sunlight. No, but the sunlight was cut off. Nuclear war, you think? That this is actually an Animatrix expansion? その表面を覆うようにして形成された人工の世界その狭間で暮らす人間環境維持装置そしてその影響力が最も大きい最下層。It looks like their knowledge of the world that they even live in comes from this excavation of knowledge. Like they don't know their own history anymore either. But they got a lot to set up and resolve in 20 minutes here. How are we going to do it? Video of Twitch streamer. Delete. Yeah, different color hair than this guy. Oh, the stairs are round, too. Their stairs are uh, square. Good point. And it looks like that was the end. The stairs just end. これ。本。じゃないよな。多分本音。え、ちょっと様子が違うのか。元々本は物理的な方法で文字やつを転写する記録形式だったの。こんな感じ。もちろん一度記録すればそれきりだし、他の本とのやり取りもできないわ。いや、あしすライクアブーマーミーム。じゃあ、ここは記録保管庫か。記録を見る。それをデータベースにしまう。それから、どうして発掘局にこだわるの？
Really, it's, I get a real 12 monkeys feel from this. I'm I'm just wondering at what point they decide, ah, we're gonna ditch work and go find out. What are we... What is our core thing here? Well, I mean, it feels like he's looking at an archive. I don't know, an archive of a place that's not like his. I don't know, I get like a real time loop feel for it. Also, they just said Pale Cocoon on the screen. Yeah, title drop. Like, some other archive has archived them, it feels like. Oh, it's an infinite loop of archival. イメージの断片ばかりで脈絡がない。女が喋っている言葉もそうだ。復元そのものは時給悪けど分析は厄介かもな。ま、俺の仕事じゃないが。分析か。今日も出勤者はなしだ。リコのやつまた無断欠勤
維持装置の届かない場所じゃ生きられないのにもっと記録を調べれば Like I said, it's Malays. People are killing themselves. Tired of living. Kiroko Horioko, the Konosekai Gakarno. Shirko to the Kita. Shirana Hoga Yokata. Midori no Sekaimo, Sono Sekai or Koasta no Ganingan that the Kotomo. But as Koreja again, it's in its boast. Kiroko Nante, Hajimekara Horioko Sanaka by Yokata. Koreja, Ningan no Rokasa, or Mita Hitna. I mean, sure, statements haven't been said. Wakatte ta. Ore datte wakatte ta. So. Dare datte. Shitte iru koto da. So it wasn't war. It's a warning about global warming, everybody. Well, I mean, more so like cutting down the rainforests and whatnot. It's the Sea Quest future. Yeah, but why is the ladder just dead end? Or is that the sea? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be. In which case, this is the future of the silo. Video time. <laughs> literally is <laughs> Agency for Cultural Affairs. I was so close, a couple of inches. Still, a, it's a state-created music video. Kind of like Cinder as well. Oh. So is it that they're not on Earth anymore? That this is actually a station, I suppose? Maybe. Or rocket to the moon, or...? So is this trip to the surface metaphorical, then, or...? One. Oh, so no, what are we looking at? Is Because it looks like an image, and not a... Active rocket. You are actively underneath something. Your sky thought, is the bottom of something else. I thought it was going up to the top, but he, no, he's at the bottom, yeah. Well, no, we know the bottom is the sea. 
So what the hell? Man, you were going to get dizzy and fall off. Yeah, when you realize that you could have vertigo. Oh, the elevator just broke. Now, with the time thing, you're behind yourself in a recording. <laughs> They're on the moon! Oh, they are. So Earth is ruined. That something's wrong with the sun. Maybe we're that far into the future. Well, no, because that wouldn't be right either. Uh, everything's zoomed. I think the most disturbing thing is that the state uh, media is telling us to pray. Yeah, it's the, they don't even know that they're on the moon. Although, I guess if he's on the surface of the moon, and the elevator broke, he should be fine in regards to not falling. Although they have artificial gravity, too. Is he just in space? I don't know, it feels like they terraformed the moon somehow, but not, not well. Give me that visual. Hey! A dome, it's a dome, okay. So Earth is fine again. Yeah, the damage doesn't look so bad from up here. Okay, so my uh, interpretation is they've been on this moon, uh, they evacuated Earth, who people who could, and they've been on the moon for so long that they've forgotten that they were even on the moon, and that like the, the life support systems are even failing in their place. Mm -hmm. So the, the, all of humanity that was on Earth is now dead. And Earth has healed itself, it's been so long. Or that or whatever the fuck they were mentioning with the sun. The sun <laughs> being cold now. You know, there was that whole movie about that concept. Right. Where right. they launch, like, things to the sun to try and, like, kickstart it back up again or whatever. But it's been I, I so it's long. Kind of there, but keep going. It's been so long that the Earth has healed itself naturally. And now, I don't know how he's getting back. I guess he's got to float to the window and push, push back down. But he's got a long way to go, because it looked like uh, that elevator was like on rocket fuel. Here's hoping anyone notices he's missing, even at that rate, but, um... Well, because we know, like, the first 80 floors have been shut down, so... And he couldn't walk that high either. I think he's dead from asphyxiation. It'll not too long from now, because he tried to walk up it, and it looked like whatever was going wrong with the uh, environmental controls that they were talking about was affecting him. That's why he, like, fell to the side and dropped his book. Right, right. Uh, I think the thing on my mind is, like, I was watching this kind of wondering, what is our central conflict? You probably, like, pointed it out the earliest, which is just, like, fighting the malaise of their situation. And the overcoming of that and, like, discovering the thing that'll actually give them energy again, which uh, they both kind of do. It's just that one of them is now probably about to fall very far and die. Well, when I gave my example of uh, the Library of Babel, 
there's a concept in that which kind of mimics this, in which it's people trying to find meaning, mm -hmm. and that they're searching through the books for the book that actually explains what what's going on, since it's an infinite library. And what tends to happen is people will start destroying parts of the library, or people will just... Because it's kind of described as sort of a... Um, like a ladder to infinity sort of thing, that you could just launch yourself off of one side and just yeah die somewhere. Because obviously it's like that whole um, Happy Wheels thing of you're not going to fall that... <laughs> you're not going to fall straight down, you're going to fall at an angle, you're probably bounce off a thing and die. And instead of hitting the infinite bottom and not fall for infinity. Right, right. But the, the grandma story from from this, where she fell and just hit the thing and just the, her insides were everywhere, as she said. That mm -hmm. sort of thing. The the malaise of no no point to existence. And then furthermore, not even un, not not even just not understanding why you're here. But actively being depressed by the concept of being here, right? Uh, in general, like if we like look at like the way humans react in general, uh, humans do need to see the sun every now and then, and without it, they do in fact get incredibly depressed. That is an entirely biological feature, and they are stuck in, as they described it, a literal concentration camp to to house all of them. This is not going great for them. Uh, and depression is kind of inevitable in that physical scenario, right? Well, plus there was something wrong with the sun that we don't even really mm -hmm. go into. I mean, I yeah. don't even know if that was true. Maybe their rust-colored earth is just, like, so heavily polluted that they're saying there's something wrong with the sun, and it just happens to be that, like, the warmth and the heat from the sun isn't reaching the surface of earth. I... I I felt like that was maybe metaphorically referring to Earth, technically, but, I mean, we're not going to get an answer. Well, no, no, because she said that she just got here from Earth, and then she's looking back at a rust-colored Earth. So that yeah. seemed very much an observation that would hold true, and not, like, metaphor. I don't know why she would say it metaphorically. That just doesn't ring anything. Right, right. Uh, still, I think overall, I really like the vibe of this. I was expecting it to, like, accelerate in pace at some point, which I think that's what the music video was kind of there for, to kind of, like, push our hero to his inevitable conclusion without having to show, like, every step of him getting there, because he just took the elevator, really. Well, I don't know. I think there would have been a lot more to read into if we were, like, to examine the words of the music video, but we just weren't, because we were uh, trying to trying absorb it. Best. Well, like I said, and the thing for me is that it was a state created. This was from mm -hmm. the, I forget what it was, the something of culture. So it was meant to be shown and displayed to the public. Yeah. Uh, the What I got out of that, reading the lyrics and trying to like invest as much as possible into it, is literally just the Keep Up Hope song. That's the best I can immediately do without like going back and like just staring at it for a while. I think ultimately, it's, it's, though, it gives me heavy vibes of a, a show, I don't know if you've seen or not, uh, called Silo. I haven't seen it, no. Where just everyone is inside of a super long silo. Like, it takes days to walk from the top to the bottom. Uh -huh. And some event happens in the history that they call some, like, a rebellion or something, where all records of who made the silo, why they're in the silo, etc., was destroyed. And all people really know is that if you go out to the surface, you die. Because they have, like, cameras that watch the surface. And one of the punishments is, you leave the silo to clean the camera. And then everyone basically sees you collapse and die. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely parallels to that. I, I like, um... Sorry, I'm trying to put together my thoughts. I think the final thing is... Just going back to the visuals, where you mentioned, like, the Tower of Babel, the silo here. Library of Babel. Uh, the, the way, like, um, they make all these corridors and infinite cubicles just, like, wonderfully depressing. And, of course, like, our final uh, shot of just, like, Earth in the distance and all the rolling clouds. I think uh, every part of, like, the way this looked just came across perfectly. I, there's no complaints from me here. I think it absolutely aced every single feel it was going through for through the visuals alone. 
Um, so I think I think we kind of covered everything we can about this right now, haven't we? Do you have any kind of final thoughts yourself? I mean, nothing that would uh, nothing I would come up with on the spot that wouldn't require like an hour of just sitting back, staring at the ceiling, and thinking about stuff. <laughs> So, so everyone, join us by going to the fridge, staring in there, and going, wait a second, that's what that meant, about like an hour later. So we'll see you all there, and I think we'll just go ahead and wrap up for the day. This has been Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See you around. <laughs>